Say amen when you're in 1 Kings. Comes right before 2 Kings. <laughs> hey, come on now. Uh, 18 verse 36. I can still hear pages turning. Glad you're not all digital. I wouldn't know nothing. <laughs> Thank God for them saved souls bringing a Bible in the church, man. <laughs> Don't get past your pray through. <laughs> amen. Say amen if you're there. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near. Now, I'll be honest with you. Ah, he had to be somewhat of a character because if you know what he had just done, all of a sudden he turns around after making fun and mocking these guys that were destroying themselves, he just just dials it in and gets serious. Kind of like what dad did when he was growing up. He's playing around and you start getting, hey, brings it right on in. Elijah saying, come near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. And he, he, here's his prayer. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God. and that thou hast turned their heart back again. See, he's always called things that are not as though they were. You're here because you're supposed to leave different today. Are you hearing me? Then, then the fire of the Lord fell. Everybody say fire. fire. That's a cool word, huh? I had that little pyromaniac episode in my, that, that little period of time in my life. Like, you like to see things burn. Anybody? You burn in the comb. And, you, almost, almost, almost burn the house down. Brother Terry, one time I, I poured gasoline down a rabbit hole out in our orchard. That, didn't, that dumb rabbit got away from me. I missed him with my 22. Back when Boys are still boys and stuff. Still like trucks and tractors and boots and guns and not hanging out and becoming house boys with video games and well. Man, I missed that rabbit. I got upset. I ran to one of the sheds, grabbed the gas can, took a match, just poured it down the poured it down that rabbit hole. Took that match and threw it in there. Boom. Almost like Marty McFly when you hit that note and back to the whoop. face all singed. The levee's on fire. <laughs> Fire's cool. <laughs> fire makes a difference. I may be being funny, but I'm saying something if you're listening. The fire of the Lord fell and consume the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Hey, you know what you call that? That's a fire. <laughs> That's a fire. <laughs> and when all the people saw it, people still need to see the fire, folks. I got some years on the same wavelength as me right now. They fell on their faces. People still fall on their faces today. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elisha said unto them, you see, until you get to the place where the Lord is God, you can't do this next part. Until you honestly get to the place where you fall on your face and allow God to be God, you will never eliminate the things that distract you and keep you from true worship. Don't miss Wednesday night. And if you miss last Wednesday night, you better get it and listen to it. Not because it's me preaching, it's because of what was said. Take the prophets of Baal 
You have to understand that that was a pagan god of fire. They literally would take their children and burn them. They take their firstborn child and they're going to they would burn it to prove that they were worshipers of Baal. Let not one of them escape. Hey, you, look, you, you can't let those things that keep you from serving God escape. They will come back and stop you again. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Let's lay our Bibles down. Let's lift up our hands and our hearts. Let's talk to the Lord right now. Jesus, we need you. Oh, we need you. We, we, we want to get to that place where we eliminate the distractions and the hindrance that stop me from being able to worship you and to fall on my face before you. That's hindering the fire from falling in my life, God, that I could be a true worshiper of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, God. Help us today, Lord. I ask for your Mercy, your grace, your anointing, and your unction to bring forth this word to your beloved today. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. I, uh, I think this is so inspirational because on multiple levels, it shows, and I want you to hear me because you may be sitting here with somebody today. Or you may be sitting here by yourself, but you got somebody somewhere else. That it shows that how one person's faith can change not only the course of a situation, but for multiple people. And in this case, a nation of people. It helps us to recall other instances because God still does this. Oh, I just you hear me today. That one stalwart faithful saint of God can decide to take a stand and make a difference. That person that's committed to doing the will of God refuses to be distracted can be more powerful than an army of evildoers. We have to remember that David in the Valley of Elah, the Esther in a king's palace and Daniel in a lion's den. Moses in Egypt. Gideon surrounded by pagan rituals. It's powerful to know that one person, one person can have a life-changing experience and change and alter the situation and circumstance of everybody around them. It also shows that as individuals, this is for someone today, that you're not alone. Even though you might think or even feel surrounded, you're not alone. Matthew 28, 20 tells us, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Those commands bring relationship. Those rules bring about something that rebellion can't get. I know, so rebellion will make you feel one way, but obedience will empower you. Because he said, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I don't know about you, but it does something to me. It empowers me when I'm surrounded or feel like everything's going the wrong way. And the resistance is coming from places that I thought should be an assistance. Oh, y'all not want to be real today. Mm -hmm. You see, in John 10, it says, my sheep hear my voice. I, I don't always want to go to, go, I don't want to go with the crowd. I ain't following you if you're not hearing him. 
In, in fact, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I have to hold told some people. They got the image of godliness. They got the, the position of, of, of God, but, but their ways aren't. And sometimes it'll take someone like a David and put him at odds with a king and take a David and, or, 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 or an Elijah or, or, you, can go down, or, 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 or a, you can go down the list of the people I've listed. They will be odds with everybody. But they're not at odds with God. They're the only ones standing for the things of God. You're going to find, you're going to find, I find as a pastor, everybody think, man, me a pastor is great. No, it puts you at odds with everybody. And I'm talking about everybody out there. I'm talking about everybody in here. Because I got, I got to help you deal with your flesh. You can't tell me. I'll tell you right here and right now, you're going to get mad at me. You're going to be upset at some of the things I say. Because I want your best spiritual life, not your best worldly life. I want you in heaven. I don't want you making heaven here. But everything in the world tells you out there, you don't need that guy. You need us. Go make that money. Go do this. Go do that. No, this is not that. Leave this for Sundays and Wednesdays. But again, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. God, as an individual, you can walk with God no matter what everybody else is doing. It also shows us that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Well, we all love God. Not to the same degree. You may have something come up and take you someplace else when you should be here. To them who are called according to his purpose. There's a conflict. You may want to go do something else, but the will of God is to do this. It shows that evil does not have to prevail. Oh, are you hearing me? The story proves that the enemy, no matter how evil, can be stopped. No matter how prosperous he seems to be or has even been in the past, it shows you you don't have to be in the majority to win if God's on your side. <laughs> Psalms 118 and 6, I love this verse of scripture. You need to highlight this one in your Bible. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. I'll tell you right here now. Get mad at me and walk. You weren't here when I got here. <laughs> oh, man. You... Y'all see, y'all got a double standard. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be living and married if someone don't treat you right. There'll be some rules involved. Hey, guess what, folks? God, God's just like you. There's some rules involved. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna be there for you. Can you hear me now? I, I like the fact that He still makes everything perfect in His time. He's God. He's faithful. He's powerful. He's just, he loves you. He's on my side. Why would I want to fight against what God would? He sees the end from the beginning. I don't, why, why would I want to get all sideways with God and the church and the pastor and the word of God to go do something? He knows everything. Hey, just tell me where to be and what to do, Lord. Isn't that how Elijah got there? Mm. His timing and ways are still and will always be the best. This story of Eliza, just, it's just an awesome story. Kind of like Paul standing up and after being stoned and left for dead, getting up and walking back into the city. That's, that's a bad story right there. See, some of y'all, you just want the story without the bad part. You, you want the victory without the opposition. You want the victory without the fiery furnace. Come on, so, come on, let's be real. You want to stare down lions without a lion's den. Wait a minute, who would not want to witness 
God putting all your skeptics to shame with an outpouring of fire in your life. Can you imagine how Daniel felt walking out of line of Daniel? <laughs> Sir, check me out. What? <laughs> you got you got to understand that's bad right there. Those three Hebrews. What? Look at that. You, you still smell my cologne. I don't even smell like smoke. Oh, yeah, you, you thought I was done. You thought I was well done. I, I, I'm talking about bad to the bone stories of people that come out of fire and lions in it. Stand up and do something for God in the face of opposition. Oh, yeah. He's an ever-present help in trouble. Come on, some of you. You're standing up all alone in that house. You're trying to get it to turn around. We're going to live for God in here. You're fighting some stuff. I'm trying to get someone to realize, don't you quit. Keep listening. Keep walking. Keep praying. Keep believing. Fire is going to fall. Fire is going to fall. Baal couldn't stop it. 450 prophets couldn't stop that fire from coming down. Elijah was so confident when they were cutting themselves. Dancing, doing a jig, cutting the rug. He sat back. Maybe he's asleep. Some of y'all ain't got that kind of confidence walking with God. Some of you make that statement, I'm walking hot, softly and humbly before another. You know, you're walking silence because you're so scared to death. You ain't willing to step out in faith. You had your Red Sea. It's your Jordan River time. <laughs> You see, at the Red Sea, he opened the, the water for you. So you think you're all bad. Now he's like, if you're bad, you step in the water, then I'll part it. That's where some of you have been stuck for years. That's where all Saul was stuck in the army. Little David showed up. The whole nation's bowing at the music. And those three, he was like, You can think you're special, but you got to start doing what's special. God's trying to let you know, stand up right now. I haven't left you. Don't, don't, don't bow to this. Don't fear the lion's den. Don't fear the fiery furnace. Don't fear. Don't fear the enemy that's around. Oh, hey, I, I'm low. I'm with you always. Oh, he's looking for a saint of God to get real. Elijah was standing alone against the false prophets on one side and the undecided on the other, kind of like, like what a pastor does. <laughs> Do a political poll. Who you voting for? You got this percentage for this guy and this percentage for that guy and a whole bunch of undecided. He was like a lone gladiator walking through the dust, coming and standing up to the enemy for a bunch of people standing around silent spectators just watching. I ain't standing with you, Elijah. I'll just wait to see what happens. I, you know, Pastor, I, I love you. you know, I love God. Y'all know on this. I'll just wait and see what happens. Look, if, don't, if you're not going to stand with me in my struggle, you won't celebrate me when I win. <laughs> you can't tell me that ain't right. You, you can't tell me deep down, you know, hey, wait a minute. Don't come calling now. It says in 1 Kings 18 and 21, and Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? You can't say that unless you got a made up mind. Not the people... In your life, vacillate because they got it from you. The 
There's a whole crowd of them. Elijah wasn't vacillating. Oh, that's, let me tell you something. Sometimes you're going to have to make a stand. Not everybody goes to agree. Your family's not. Your, your church is not. The people you're sitting next to right now may not. You, you start getting a prayer life and they look at you. What are you doing? I want to be on time for prayer. I'm going to take my own car if you can't get up and get going. I know I'm real right there. I want you to start being a praying spouse. Let's go to church together. Let's do this God thing together. And that's wonderful. But even if you don't, I'm out. I'll see you when I get back. Ain't nothing great. I'm a, I'm a worshiper. I'm a real child of the king. I want you to be there, but I'm not waiting for you. How long haul you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if thou, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Look, I don't get upset when y'all don't make no decision. I do an altar call. I don't care if you never come. Now, you better care. I can't work with someone that's not convinced. I will never grab one of you, drag you over here, and dunk you in that and baptize you outside of your will. I can't feel anybody with the Holy Ghost. You have to yield to that. But I promise you, if you start walking and talking with the Lord, you're going to get baptized in Jesus' name, and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because that's a promise unto you and to your children and all that are far off. It is still that. This is still that. So when you're living for God and you're doing all you know to do in God's will, let me just say this. Many times it will be done without fanfare. See, don't, 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 don't think that what happens in here I'm not myopic, uh, myopic about that. I'm glad you're worshiping God. I, that's not for me. See, 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 I, let me tell you something. Those of you, and we talked about this with the leadership team recently, those that we talked about where the church has come from. Talked about that. It don't look like it's come far, but you weren't here. I was. I was. I've been here. Come a long way. It's been a drought going on. And someone decided to show up. That's all right. I still serve the God of droughts. I don't care what it looks like. I know some of you, you can't worship God till it looks right. You can't worship God till you feel something. See, that's come to pass. Some of you got to get that place to God where you know. Though he slayed me, yet will I trust him. I'm just. I don't care if it's a drought. I'm not going to doubt. I don't do this for the fanfare. I do it because it's the will of God. Don't desire the ministry if you have to have that. Look, if you, if you can only do it when you're on the stage, then you need to go be a performer. You ain't no preacher or a pastor. You can't come here on those off days when it's inconvenient. Go to the theater. You hearing me? Go to the circus. This ain't no act. It's acts of the apostles, but ain't no act. There's a drought. Elijah's been in a drought. He just let those 450 prophets do this amazing light show. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Kind of like that show they did out in Texas a little while back with that rapper. Crazy stuff. Elijah's sitting back there making fun. Man, look. Almighty God's never asked anybody to do that to themselves. Almighty God's never asked you to do things of that nature. And so Elijah walks up, and in the middle of a drought, he builds this altar and does all the formalities. He says, go get 12 barrels of water. <laughs> Some of you don't have that kind of faith. 
God, I'll do whatever you want as long as I can see how it'll work out. I can't give you my best. I can't give you. That's all we got. So Elijah has just dumped 12 barrels of precious water on the sacrifice. And really, and this is for all of us. I want you to get this. He really kind of prays just a, an uneventful prayer. Almost insignificant compared to that of the false prophets that were dancing and jigging and cutting and shouting. And Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Would that take 25 seconds? Little 63-word prayer. But the power and the fire of God falls and consumes the sacrifice. We preach that. We like that when the fire of home. Oh, I'd like to pray a prayer like that. Simple prayer and also. In fact, everyone is focused on that fire. It's so easy to get so focused on the falling fire that we forget we're only part way through. They still needed it to rain. All that grandiose and amazing things that happened on Mount Carmel and that fire and that amazing consuming of the sacrifice and oh, look at the fire. We get all excited about, oh, he's on fire for God. We get so focused on the fire that we neglect to continue and push for the rain. You get satisfied in a moment of enthusiasm and fire that you quit living for the rain. The downpour, the bearing of fruit. You can't have fruit without water. The sacrifice is wonderful. God don't want you to stay there. Be that sacrifice and let the rain come. Elijah lived and prophesied in dark days and King Ahab and Queen Isabel had, had ushered in an era of idolatry. Hey, don't think that that's a strange word doesn't happen today. Some of us, we're our own self-idolaters. You just think so highly of yourself, God's like, okay, you go ahead with your bad self. You know better than the word. No one can tell you nothing. You unmoved, you untouched. Idolatry is the worship of the physical as if it were God. You got stuff and you got things that you'll bow to and work on and you got to have in your life no matter what and you just fit God in when it's convenient. Just sounds like the world today. It seems everyone was a backslider in Elijah's early years of ministry. Jezebel was a murderous queen who introduced Israel, God's people, to a brand of sensual religious paganism. Everybody's turning to this, this rampant debauchery throughout the kingdom. The culture buckled under the pressure of compromise and lasciviousness. The, the, the church was dying and no one would stand up and say, wait a minute. Good and decent people were forced into hiding. Godly people became the outcasts in their society simply because they would not conform. I'm going to tell you something. I'm looking for some non-conformers today. First King tells us in 18 and 4, 4 it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets. We don't need a man of God. We don't need a pastor. We don't need a church. Cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water. 
we may not be shoving them in a cave, but we want to make sure we put them in their place. Oh, see, see, let me, I'm going to tell you something. If I can't tell you the truth and if I can't tell you no, and if I can't tell you, hey, you need to get this out of your life, I'm your preacher, not your pastor. And I get, wait a minute, don't, don't get me wrong. It's not that I'm looking to be your pastor. I'm looking to serve God. And if you want a pastor, I'm here. I'm not chasing nobody. You think you got it all by yourself? Then go do bad all by yourself. No, no, I'm not. No, you don't understand. I don't want to lead anybody that don't want to be led. Even Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Well, we're going to change that now? It's a sad day when you put your, put your life in that of a doctor when all he's got is a practice. And you'll pour out all kinds of money on them. Go down to that backyard garage mechanic or something, pour all that money out, pour all that money, and all these things, but you're going to shortchange yourself on a man of God. Babies and children were the most valuable, but yet they were the most vulnerable in that culture. It sounds like today. That culture that Jezebel shaped because they were offered as sacrifices to the pagan god known as Baal. God of fire, watching our children be destroyed because of what's on television. It's called a program for a reason. Programming our babies and our children. It's okay to commit suicide. It's okay to not care about your life. You're not worth nothing. You get me fired up on this subject, listen, and don't you drive around with some man listening to music, cutting down women like there's something less than a lady. Kick that jerk out of your car. Hey, it goes the other way, too. Don't you be all upset if you're going to hang around a joker like that, that he treats you like that. Well, history has repeated itself. Here we are again. Just because you're not calling it bow don't mean it's not the same. If all this kind of sounds familiar, it's probably because I could just as easily be describing today's culture where good is called evil and evil is called good, and where righteousness is considered stupid. And sensuality is okay and it's normal. Well, well you, you, hey, hey man, you, you, where do you think? The whole world's going around. They got tanning machines. and you, you, you can even inject oil to make you look like you got muscles today. Come on, man. That lipstick make you look like your red, sensual, kissing lips. Just wear that low cut. Because you know us men, man, we, we, we lose three quarters of our brain if we see cleavage. Oh, what? You, what? You think I'm lying? We don't see. We don't want to hear this stuff. We don't want to. We don't. Bowels too important. Makes me feel good. Come on, I'm getting, get this on. I'm going, I'm going to the club. Look, I'm going to make them look at me. Dance the night away. No, you're dancing your soul. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting there watching them program, painting yourself all up. Wait a minute. We... We would not, on God's green earth, want a little 12, 13-year-old to do it. Well, you think it's okay because you're an adult? I thought adults were supposed to know better. That old saying, do as I say, not as I do? Wait, wait, you, you think that came out of the Word of God? That's called a hypocrite. Millions of defenseless babies have been murdered, destroyed, because of inconvenience. Every shameful act of depraved society is parading in our streets today. Everything has come out of the closet. They want you to shove the church into the corner. Abortion in our lifetime is the single most atrocious genocide in the history of mankind. Let me tell you something. They're sitting back and that's okay while they, they, they sip their wine 
drink their lattes and be indifferent and still sitting on the seats of a church. What have we become as a people, as a nation? What will become of this world or this nation without a revival? How much longer will God allow mercy to hold back the hand of judgment? Hey, hey, I know. Oh, this is this is an ugly picture when we start to realize what's going on out there. We have they say follow the science, and then yet they want to deny science. Look, don't tell me gender don't matter. If you're trying to raise chickens, you're gonna need one of each. <laughs> I ain't buying into that mess. Don't make me lie for you. Come on. I get it. But what has happened is the same thing's happening right now. That happened then. People buying in. I know, oh, it makes you feel, you feel liberated, but don't, don't let me be confused. The liberty is often confused with rebellion. If you're doing stuff now you didn't do before, when you walk real close to God, trust me, you're not liberated. Elijah prayed. Listen, this drought is a man of God's fault. Oh, this one's going to make you mad. He prayed for the drought. The people are enjoying all the sustenance. They're blessed. God, cut it all off. Get their attention. Wake them up. Because they're all burning. Withhold rain, God. Three and a half years. It says in James. James, that's New Testament, folks. See, all the Old Testament don't matter no more. Oh, you're kidding me, man. You don't, you don't know. what we'll, we'll, we'll have a conversation about that. But James said, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we. He, he had the same, the same thing, just like pastor does. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. I'll let you know, secret, there's some of you. Oh, God, they need a drought. They ain't taking it serious. They're playing on the threshold of hell. And it rained not on the earth in the space of three years and six months. Now, he condenses this whole story in just this verse. And he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and earth brought forth her fruit. Do you know what it said? The fire is great, but we need the rain. Don't forget about the rain, folks. I, I'm thankful when the fire falls in there, but we need to move forward for the rain. It was a brutal famine. You've been through some stuff. You've been through some sickness. Uh, the people were desperate for life-giving rain, but God's like, I'm withholding it because the man of God knows you're messing around. Despite all this death and all this destruction and disaster, Elijah remained faithful and sensitive to the voice of the Lord. Oh, are there any yet here today? Is there anybody in this house this morning? Did anybody get up and get dressed and come to church? Because you're ready for God to bring a deliverance. Oh, I know it's bad. But I got a delivering God still. I know it's ugly. I didn't just come to church. I came to see the deliverer. Is anybody really willing to set aside your little garden parties and your little vacation? Is there a saint of God in here unhappy with the state of some things that you move beyond being stirred? And you're finally ready to change. You want to get serious about a move of God. <laughs> you got to remember and you got to look at that crookedy old dusty lone figure, that old prophet that stood alone. I'll tell you right here and right now, don't desire the office of a pastor or a man of God. A lot have done it. It ain't all what it's checked out to be, is it, Brother Davenport? Brother Lulu, it ain't always, it ain't all fun and games. 
And every other day, you get a phone call from someone checking out from their commitments. People backslide for calling you, and their life's a mess, and all you've been doing is telling them everything they need to do to succeed. And all they do is they live for the fire, and they forget the rain. So this godly man, this, this man alone, led of the Spirit, is not caught up. Let me tell you something, men of God. Saying to God, you can't get caught up in the trivial affairs. I know it's uncomfortable and it ruins family time sometimes and it ruins life and all the things that the world says you need to pursue. But thank God that he wasn't diluted and ungodly in the ungodliness and he stepped forth, still sensitive to the voice of God and he stood up and had a real prayer life every day. Listen, folks. Elijah realized that there needed to be an outpouring of fire before there could ever be a downpour of rain. Maybe I'm not doing a good enough job here today. See, the fire represented death, and rain represents life. Oh, Lord, Elijah understood that you can't have new life until you put down the old one. You can't walk in newness of life until you bury the old one. This generation will not have the outpouring of rain until we first have an outpour of fire. We've got to have the fire fall. I get that. But we have to have the fire fall. So I echo the words of Elijah. How long haunt you between two opinions? You vacillate. Is that God or isn't that God? That's where you live. That's why you're anemic. I refuse to have an anemic church. I'm going to get on your toes. I'm going to get in your face. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not called to appease you. I'm called to please God. You ought to get excited about someone in your life that's going to live for God. Oh, you, you ought, if your spouse gets up and prays and you hear that echo, you ought to thank God. Get your carnal backside up. God, let me get a hold of that. You come walking in here and you see saints of God praying, it ought to convict you to get up at six and I'm going to be there. You ought to pursue, pursue that as you pursue and expect to have such a good spouse. James tells us, James, man, y'all need to go read James. He said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Double-mindedness is patheticness. You say one thing and do another. You go do this and you want to do that. Every time you turn around, you're promising it's going to be different. You're double-minded. Double-minded is non-spirited. They got nothing. Hello? Oh, yeah. let's, let's, let's deal with double-mindedness right now. Instability. You're unstable. One minute you're here, the next minute you're here. No? Wishy-washy. You, you, you see, I have to understand that fits. That's what Ahab wants. That's what Ahab's of this world are like. No backbone. No intestinal fortitude. Pleasing who they're with at the moment. Changing their values by the day. You have to understand, Joshua summed it up, that we still need to choose you this day who you're going to serve. And it can't change tomorrow. Oh, I lost you. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, no, I don't care who I'm surrounded by. I don't care what, time, what, 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 what generation it is. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to serve the Lord. Whether you like me, whether you hate me, whether you follow me or whether you refuse me, at some point 
today in these last days with a world that's getting wicked. We ought to stand up, not for the feeling, but for the fire and the rain. I'm going to serve God. I got a made up mind. Come on, ladies. Come on, let's be real when that joker vacillates back and forth. You just a child. Go grow up. I'm going to be seated. I'm not done. I'm going to get in this one. See, I, 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 I always thought, man, 6'4", 240, 250 pounds. I used to be in pretty good shape. Well, I remember what Brother Z Chris said, round is a shape, so I was in shape. I, I remember I was a single man, you know, doing my thing, preaching all around the country. And uh, I'd been through some stuff. Wounded, I was hurt. Believed God, but I was going through some stuff. And I, I remember, man, this, 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 this absolutely beautiful lady was talking to me. She's in church. You know, she goes to a great church, great pastor. You know what she said to me? I was so dumb and slow, I didn't realize what she was saying until I thought about it. Like about a week later, it finally just kind of cling. Hey, God, look, look, ladies, when that testosterone just burst into our system that made us boys and you girls, it did something to our brain. We're slower than you. We don't catch up till about 25. And some of us a little later. <laughs> and all the, all the ladies said, oh, me. <laughs> Can you <pass? laughs> Okay, guys, I'll get off that. I don't want y'all to be cornering me after church. She said, Brother Crow, you got a lot going, but you're emotionally unavailable. In other words, I got to go get myself sorted out. <laughs> I didn't get offended. I didn't get hurt. I realized, oh, wait a minute. But the truth can make set you free, make you free. If you're hearing something, you know full well you just can't. You're emotionally unavailable to God because you haven't really made your mind up that you're done with that. You're playing. You're playing. You like the idea of everything, but to really roll them sleeves up and be a man. Oh, man, maybe I'm by myself tonight. So Elijah does the same thing. He says, you know, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if thou follow him, make up your mind. You can't serve God and the world. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have to be honest and say, whatever it is that's kept you, you can't keep it. You can't. You can argue and fight and say how much you like it and love it, but remember, you can get the fire to fall, but you're never going to get that rain. Jesus stated in Matthew 6 and 24, no man, no one can serve two masters. You're stuck, not because God ain't moved. You're stuck because you haven't. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise you. You cannot serve God. And I'm going to tell you something right now. God ain't a liar and God ain't wrong. He hasn't stopped moving. He hasn't stopped saving. He hasn't stopped calling men and ladies at God. He's still got individuals standing up against the tide. He's still building and adding another church. He ain't stopped doing the church. We stop being the people. So if you ever, and if we ever want to see that downpour, that deluge of the Holy Ghost at Souls Harbor Church, then we have to experience in the purging of the falling fire. Well, Pastor, you're stuck in the Old Testament, am I? Matthew 3 and 11 says, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Repentance is great, folks. Uh, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Let me tell you why you're stuck. You got to get that fire to come and consume all that junk and consume those dumb thoughts, those things that make you vacillate and question whether he's God or not, whether you're going to trust the decision he makes or not. Oh, let me touch on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, I was in a spot. I lost my dad as a teenager. 
I was a mess. I was broken, dysfunctional, and I didn't even know it. And one day someone looked at me, hey, wait a minute. Man, I'm a young man in the church. I'm preaching in jails. I'm preaching at soup kitchens. I'm borrowing people's buses and vans to bring people to church. And someone pulled me up and said, wait a minute, because I had said something. He said, you're mad at God. I looked, what? You're mad at God. I said, what are you talking about? You think God did you wrong the way he took your dad. And I uncontrollably started just crying and weeping. And I didn't understand what was coming on. And I'm just crying and weeping. And I realized, my God, I've been bitter at God for a situation. I'm doing the work of God. I'm punching the clock at the church. I'm showing up. The fire's falling. There's things going on. I was bitter. And it took me getting to that place of realizing he knows greater than he knows better. He understands. He, I don't have to make sense of it all. I just have to know that he does. And I found that place of repentance. I had the fire. But I need to break. I get it. I know you. I know. I know you've prayed a few times. I know you give it a few minutes here and there. I, 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 I know that you got a Christianity and you got a lot of friends and you're, you're associated with the church and you got all the, you can check all the boxes. But your altar's empty. Your altar needs the sacrifice on it. It needs some fire to consume it. You need to be on it. You need to get back on that altar that you walked away from in your anger and bitterness at God. You got an upset. You see, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place, in one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. They had already gone through loss. They didn't really understand everything was going on. They just did as they were told. And the Bible says in verse 3, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. How do you get the fire to fall? <laughs> you got to get yourself on the altar. You got to place yourself. You, you got to be willing to be the sacrifice. Uh, you got to be willing to be the one to pray and pray some more and then step back and let God do his thing. Where, where, where's, where's the people today that want the fire to fall? Where's those faithful praying people that no matter what goes on, let God be God? I don't care if there's a drought or a downpour. He's God. Where, where's the spiritual leaders of Souls Harbor? where's the spiritual leaders here at this church Hebrews 1 and 7 says that of the angels he saith who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire Where, where's the fire at today who's got the fire today because if we have more fire we're going to get more rain You want more rain, you got to be willing to get on fire. You got to be willing, oh God, I don't matter about this or that. I'm going to get on fire. I want the rain. You got to get the fire before you're going to get the rain. You got to get that fire before you're going to get that rain. You want that miracle, you better get some fire. You better get that back to that. Oh, I know you want the rain, but you don't get the rain until there's a sacrifice. And the fire falls. Oh, hallelujah. You can't get the rain till you had a fire. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I want everybody coming along at the same speed here. Some really don't want the fire because it takes sacrifice, it takes consecration, perseverance, dedication, courage, prayer, and more prayer. It takes confrontation. 
contribution. The fire will not fall if your business is usual. Fire will not fall if you're just going through the motions. Fire will not fall while the altar is in disrepair or non-existent. Listen, listen, listen. We need fire in our homes, the churches. There's a spiritual famine today in society. Just, just, just because it's non-confrontational does not mean we got to be non-confrontational. At some point, you got to get back. Not in my house. Not in my life. No, 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 no. no. Wait a minute. I'm about to call fire down. I say, come on. God is God in this house. Too many people let too many things in your home, in your heart, and in your mind. I, I get it. I know they're doing it out there. And I know they're even having what you call church out there. But the fire ain't falling there. There's a big difference between growth and infection. You can get a swelling of people. It doesn't mean they're growing. Because if the church will not call fire down, the rain cannot come. Please don't forget about the rain. If the church leaders will not pray for the fire, we're not going to get the latter rain. I know some of you step back, some of you standing back, some of you stuck back because you're waiting for the latter rain. You don't understand. We don't get the we, if, if we as leaders don't pray the fire down, we don't get the latter rain. The Holy Spirit is powerful and it moves in mysterious ways. Anyone who tells you they fully understand every inner working of the Holy Ghost is either a liar or extremely foolish. But I can tell you that the Holy Spirit manifests itself in many different ways. It convicts us, it guides us, and yet it still saves us. <laughs> it brings joy and consternation. It reveals your weakness and it empowers you at the same time. The Holy Ghost is the joy and the convictor. You've got to get the fire and the rain. Sometimes it can feel like a gentle shower and other times it'll burn like a flame of fire. It heals, it makes whole, it breaks and reshapes, it, it molds us and makes us better than we were before. If we'll yield to it, it, it fills us and surrounds us and it goes before us. And when the Holy Ghost falls like rain, it brings growth, just like the physical rain. You don't see it any better than you see it here in Arizona. A dry place and all of a sudden rain and next thing you know you got a lot of weeding to do and everything's green and everything's growing. I'm telling you some of you are just a prayer away from the rain. <laughs> You're just a prayer away from the strength and refreshing and cleansing of the spirit. Culture needs a downpour. The Holy Ghost reign. But remember the way God operates. It's fire first. Then the rain. And the Holy Ghost falls like fire at purify. It says in Malachi, it says, for he is like a refiner's fire. And like fuller's soap, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, the Levitic, the priests. Yep. Hey, leaders. Be first. And purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. Separation will be unto the Lord. You can't get to the rain until you've gone through the purification of the fire. Look, we can't go and offer a bull on fine Mount Carmel today. We have to present ourselves to God on the altar. He's not looking for bulls and goats. Can I tell you something? He's waiting for you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Romans, and I'm, 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 I'm going to wrap this up. I know I'm going to wrap this up. And it says, Romans 12, one, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. You see, you can't even say it's your own because if you're going to get the fire and the rain, you better give it to him. You better quit messing with that temple. You better quit polluting the temple. 
I'm going to put Markin and Mar in the temple. Ah, oh, if it's his, it's his hand supposed to be on it, not yours. Any man starts trying to date my daughter, I'll tell them I can put my hands everywhere you put yours. I hope you don't ever make us uncomfortable. Because I promise it ain't going to feel the same, brother. I got a few shovels. Y'all think I'm playing. In fact, I'll take that further. Touch one of these ladies around here. Ooh. Hello? And every man ought to say amen. Me too. Me too, pastor. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Y'all think I'm lying today. A living sacrifice. You want that fire, you need to get that place on. I'm yours, Lord. I'm your. Uh, I'm telling you, someone, someone get the Holy Ghost today. Someone get saved today. Holy, accept the one that God, which is your reasonable servant. And be not conformed to this. Don't look like him. Don't act like him. Don't dress like him. Don't sing like him. Don't dance like him. Nothing like him. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. They were in a three and a half year drought. The man of God just trying to get them to turn back. Oh, hallelujah. God wants to pour fire out today. And he's got a rain deluge that's on its way. Oh, somebody ought to lift their hands right now. Ah, I present myself a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto you. Every one of us, every one of us experience a drought of some type. You may have a drought in your health. It may seem like no end in sight. Physical problems everywhere. It may be a drought of finances. Bills are coming in faster than you've got money to pay them. Your occupation is a drought. You lost employment. Can't even do what you do for a living. Maybe your marriage is in a drought. But all the droughts that the world ever created, I can't think of anything worse than a spiritual drought. Oh, hallelujah. You, you read your Bible. But it's like reading Greek. You're getting nothing out of it. It's driving you insane. It puts you to sleep. You're in a spiritual drought. You, you go to church. You get nothing out of it. You're just checking time. And oh, you got, well, how do you do today? You find yourself in that spiritual drought. Listen, can I tell you this? About a hundred million churchgoers in America. Yet this, this country ain't making moral and spiritual impact like it should. Why? How come? Thousands of churches, empty seats, empty pews. Churches are closing their doors on Wednesday and Sunday nights. And then there's churches that are literally closing taking down the shingle. I believe, and it boils down to a lack of passion. A lack of fire within the body of Christ. Because if you won't be the sacrifice and get the fire to fall, the rain ain't coming. Oh, the problem is there are those who are only able to see. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. There are some that only see a snapshot of what Christianity is. You're living on dead, dry, hiding from the world, just, just trying to exist. You know, there's some people that, 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 that feel the rain and there's others just get wet. It all depends on how you treat your Christian walk. If you won't let the fire fall in your life and consume and burn out and get you to, 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 to get closer to God and become holy and separate yourself and whatever it is, whether it's a weight or a sin, you're going to go through Christian motions. 
Let me caution you without a genuine experience with the Lord, you're never going to be passionate. Because passion entails conversion. You've got to be converted. You've got to be convinced. Conversion involves transformation. It, it, it's got to undergo a change as a result of an experience. And Paul knew this. Paul knew there had to be an experience. You, you just can't call yourself a Christian and not experience Christianity. But what you you got to have that experience that we talk about. you got to have the back. Tism. Yeah, you you got to have the repentance and, and the fire of the Holy Ghost has got to fall or you'll vacillate, you'll be anemic, and the rain won't come. In Acts chapter 19, it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy? Has the fire fallen in your life yet? We haven't heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. <laughs> and he said unto them, and he goes all the way back to baptism. Unto then, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. I get repentance is great. People, you can go your whole life, say sorry, and not be saved. Amen. Are you hearing me? saying to the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on, G on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they, they called themselves Christians. They were baptized in the name, in the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Neither is there any other, for there's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. You want the fire to fall? You have to be the sacrifice. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And Paul knew, I've got to get a hold of them. They call themselves, I don't care who they are, where they are, if they call them Christian, we got to continue the work of Paul. We got to, has the fire fallen in your life? Has the fire fallen? Because when the fire falls, the rain's going to come. The rain's going to come. Drug well, addicts just don't wake up in the morning and decide to stop. There needs to be an experience. Alcoholics just can't lay down that. They need an experience. Gambling addicts, porn addicts, I don't care what it is. You need an experience. You need the fire to fall if you're going to get the rain. And I know. I know. Really? You really got to do that? No, you, no, you don't. But like Jesus told Nicodemus, except you're born again, you cannot enter. You can't. <laughs> and that's why there's no passion. Because you've had no experience. Oh, I get it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I get it. I, 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 see, I've been around. They serve in a capacity in the church. They do something. Yeah. Maybe they sing church songs or they usher or they, they, they even teach a Bible study or may even preach from time to time or quote some Bible verses or they pray real loud, stirring prayers like, wow. They even pay tithe and offering. Yet... They haven't really been converted. Just coming doesn't mean you're converted. Just showing up don't mean you're converted. There's no real change that's taking place. The fire hasn't fallen in your life. Listen, we need to understand that while conversion comes way of an experience with the Lord, not every experience with the Lord results in a conversion. Judas walked with Jesus for over three years. He saw Jesus do a lot of great things. He heard him preach life-saving words. And, but at the end, Judas wasn't converted. He merely, he merely walked out over 30 pieces of silver. I know you got all that in a bag of chips, but he can tell you what Jesus looks like. You and I can't. He went out and hung himself. 
Peter had seen Jesus do marvelous things. He spoke face to face with him. He told Peter, you go, I'm going to build my church on you, pal. He saw a transfigured Jesus engaged in a divine dialogue with Moses and Elijah. Yeah. But with all that, We know Peter had an experience with Jesus, but Peter still wasn't converted. Because at that moment of truth, Peter even denied that he had ever known Jesus. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm in your living room now. See, because there are many in church for reasons other than because they've been converted today. Somebody's here to make his spouse happy. Because you know you won't get no peace unless you just go. And so your body here is here, but your mind is. Someone's here because they're trying to bargain with God. You're the same mess you've always been, and you're just trying to get the Lord to fix something. You figured you... You got a better chance with God if you just come to church. There's probably someone here out of obligation today. You came more out of habit than a real genuine desire to worship the Lord. And you feel like God ought to be glad you're here. I'm no Elijah. I'm not much at all, but I stopped by here today. Tell somebody, if you haven't come because you're passionate about your Christian walk, and if you haven't come because you know God is worthy to be praised, and if you haven't come with a mind that's convinced, stayed on Jesus. And you might be in the right place today. <laughs> you may not be here for the right reason. <laughs> Oh, and I, and I know I got that fear that you may leave no better than when you got here. But if you're open to an experience, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. If, you, if you're open and you're willing to say, not my will, but that, if you're willing to get converted today, if you're willing, I, I've been doing it my way long enough. I want the fire because I don't want to forget about the rain. I get it. He will not quench a smoking flash. You may not be on fire, but give me a spark. No, 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 no. I, I, hold on. Are you this is going to get tough right here. Revelation, he says. So then because thou art lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Get, get, get. Well, I know we don't like to think of Jesus like that, but let's just get real here. You know, he turned the money table. He, 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 he. I firmly believe in biblical Christianity. Not that stuff they're talking about out there. But I'm talking about, listen, there's no such thing really as partial, passionate, or partially committed. You can't be sort of committed. You're either committed or you're not. A, a, a parish that doesn't do you any good if it only partially opens. <laughs> you know, when a pilot of an airliner is going down that, that runway at some point, as he's speeding down there, he can't decide to remain on the ground. He's going to have, we're, we're going. Because when he crosses that line, he's committed to the air. He's going to crash. Unfortunately, there's a whole lot of churches filled with those who've never left the ground. They make a lot of noise. They act like they're doing something. They're sitting there revving their engines. You heard it? You've been on an airplane? Bring them all the way up. Bring them all the way up. Just checking everything. There's a lot of people sitting around. They, they, oh, they're stirring. They're changing their flat. They make a lot of noise. They make a lot of commotion. They make a lot of promises. 
They tell everyone, buckle up, we're about to fly. They're always telling everyone what they're going to do. They're always getting ready. They're perpetually getting ready. They've been planning on it, meaning to, wanting to, trying to, going to, aiming to, hoping to. But they never leave the ground. They're stirred but not changed. It's just engine noise. You can change all that today. You can change all that today. Uh, I, even, even though you're here like that, you don't have to leave like that. Oh, if Elijah can look and say, why are you stuck? Because he's ready to help them get unstuck. You're in the right place to get unstuck. I need baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Doesn't end there. You have to understand this is crucial about making it or not because he goes on. Whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his weed into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. It's time to go to the next level, church. It's time to let the Holy Ghost start doing its work. It's time for us to start healing. It's time that we give ourselves wholly and completely to the will of God and the Holy Ghost will, will fall like a refiner's fire. Let's stand. Let's all stand. Sister Asia, get ready. I'm going to read Romans 12 again. I beseech you. I plead. I, I, I can't even imagine how imploring Paul was. You therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, someone here today, you've been stuck. And I know you don't want no one to see it. And I know you don't want no one to know the warfare in your mind and your heart. But let me tell you something. God's completely aware. And everyone should be in an altar. And everyone should present themselves as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reason. Reason. Just, just the beginning of service. And he goes on and says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everybody say, I can make up my mind today. And that you may prove what is good and acceptable. See, because when God accepts it, the fire falls. And the king said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. First Kings 18. Elijah said to his servant, go up, look now into the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up. Say unto Ahab, even Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down. Let the rain stop thee. Don't forget about the rain, folks. It's all about the rain. The sacrifice precedes the fire. Fire precedes the rain. Is there, is there anybody ready? Is anybody listening to this preacher today that just come along to tell you that if you'll let the fire fall, the rain's coming? That if you'll be the sacrifice, the fire will fall and the abundance of rain and, and, and everything can grow and be fruitful. Are you ready to let the fire fall so the rain can come, the miracles can come?